Hey, good morning, and uh, we're gonna do something well, a little different today, but maybe not. It's uh, 3D printing, but it's uh, it's based on Maker's Muse. I don't know if you've heard of his channel or not. It's Angus down there in Australia, and he has over a million subscribers, which continues to grow for him. Hey, way to go, man. And he does a lot about 3D printing, but he had these five questions uh, about 3D printing, and he sort of tagged uh, Joel over there at the uh, 3D Printing Nerd and a few other people and said, you know, here's the five questions, sort of answer them. And uh, I think he wanted us all to make YouTube videos uh, to answer the, you know, the five questions. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to answer those five questions. <laughs> Yeah, five interesting questions, and I had to write them down because my memory's not worth a any more. <laughs> but the very first one he uh, asks is, when did you first hear about 3D printing? And that's a good question because, yeah, it's been around for a long time now, and some people get kind of surprised how far back it actually goes. Uh, my first run-in with 3D printing was actually, uh, it would have been on uh, YouTube, and it was a documentary show uh, about a fellow that was making a small replica uh, adjustable wrench from uh, a real one on a 3D printer that was very basic and it took days to you know print this little wrench thing out and I was like really amazed with it because I was like oh my god you know like, look at that the guy's actually making a replica and I couldn't understand the technology at the time is to even you know how is this machine even doing that and uh, got sort of intrigued and again like I guess us like everybody always thought oh that's above my pay grade I can't even go there uh, later on uh, saw the 3d printing on a lot of mainstream uh, YouTube uh, channels about some of these new machines coming out and uh, started watching reviews and realized these machines are just they're just they're just out there they are beyond my you know understanding and there was only one way around that and watch some more YouTube reviews until I finally realized, you know, I think I can take this on. And I'll be honest with you, it was kind of a scary task because I was seem like even though I had electrical engineering behind me, it was like I am taking on these stepper motors, this this nozzle thing that's going to heat plastic up and it's going to put it on a plate for me and it's going to somehow do layers and make something was just like just seems kind of almost, you know, just beyond me and of course talking about 32-bit boards at that time uh, some people were getting into Raspberry Pis because they could you know remote control the printer or something you know it was some technology and this is going right back to around uh, 2012 into 2014 right about there yeah 20 2014 was really the breaker where I, I finally says you know what I'm gonna go shop for a printer and buy something and get my feet wet kind of thing and you know, either it'll be a, either this is going to fly or this is going to be the biggest waste of money ever. Yeah. <laughs> that was question number one. All right. Now, uh, question number two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the first thing you 3D printed? And in this case, I can honestly tell you that was an interesting uh, piece for in itself. That was the CR10 machine at the time, which I had purchased. And it came with some files, and the first thing I wanted to print was this little cat that came with the CR10. Now, if if you're old enough to remember that those early days, the uh, the software had a glitch in it, and it would virtually knock the head of the cat off as it was printing it. So we all ended up, hundreds of people reported the headless cat thing, and it was on Facebook. It was like all over the uh, media at that time a little bit uh, with jokes about the headless cat from Creality, which. They fixed that pretty quick. I don't know how the uh, situation happened in the first place, but it was some kind of glitch in the software. But yeah, the little headless cat, that was my first uh, entry into 3D printing. And of course, uh, being your first machine and you've just started out, what a, what a great example of, oh, something's wrong. The head just came off the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh yeah oh those are those are fun days now I, I'd love to sit down with Angus and uh, in Australia have a beer and talk about the headless cat stories but anyway we'll go to number three <laughs> and I don't even drink <laughs> anyways number three uh, do you view, view uh, 3d printing uh, as a hobby or a tool and uh, why yeah okay yeah uh, 
I have, since I started 3D printing, I guess the very first thing that uh, I wanted to head towards was a tool. So for me, 3D printing uh, represents a tool in my shop with my my lathe, my, uh, you know, the surface grinders, anything I have in here that's really, it's all just tools, the bandsaw, you know, the drill presses, whatever. And the 3D printing uh, for me was, was going to become a tool, not a hobby. Uh, i tell you the truth, I never uh, took the 3D printing on as a hobby. I always looked at the machine and thought, this could become a tool. And when I first got it, it was, uh, uh, a matter of was trying to stay away from making toys because that's tell you the truth that's all I could see in the media at the time when you know this was back that 2000 oh, 14 2015 era uh, there was a ton of plastic you know toys and dragons and all kinds of uh, stuff out there and what I was looking at was I was trying to figure out how to make plastic things that were usable tools that we could you and I could use every day for you know around the shop and I found all kinds of really cool stuff but uh, it was still sort of evolving which it still is uh, you know it's, it's not gonna stop evolving but uh, my 3d printers uh, right now uh, make uh, components for tools and that's what they do in the uh, 3d printing world for me so it's like yeah it's a tool you know it's also become a little bit of a business whatever uh, so it's an e that to me was an easy question. Now, number four, uh, what is the best 3D printer? This is a tough one. Yeah, it, well it is. <laughs> number four, what is the best 3D printer? And of course, this is according to me, and uh, that's the way the question is uh, directed as to what I think is the best 3D printer out there. And again, uh, Maker's Muse there over there, uh, he didn't really specify from the industrial end of it, commercial and or consumer grade. And I'm going to stay with consumer grade because you, me, that's what we can afford. Those are the sort of printers that we look at and, and we want to buy. Uh, <clears throat> every printer I've run into seems like it has an Achilles heel or a glitch somewhere. And I'll give you a quick example of that. The uh, uh, longer LK5 Pro is on a terrific price right now. In fact, I'll see if I can provide you a link for it in the description below. I think Geek Buying has them right now. They're around $229, which is really cheap. The build plate is 300 by 300 by 400 or something. So it's a huge build plate for, its, for the price. The problem with the LK5 uh, Pro is the it's slow. It's, that's the only problem if there was some way to make that machine run like a hyperspeed printer like the bamboo lab or something that would be a heck of a buy you know but uh that uh that would have been my favorite if it wasn't for the it's just slow uh the best printer i think i like right now is probably the solo 8 you know that's probably to me but i like size i go for size you know uh the stuff i make right now uh if you've watched the show at all in the last few weeks i took a 30 dollar piece of junk and um, got it turned around and made it print and it's printing uh, production items that require a 300 by 300 millimeter plate size which in other words you know bamboo lab would be everybody's favorite I think I, I don't see why not it is like the best machine out there for the price and for the features and the way it, they run they're basically plug and play I think they're a terrific machine uh, the downside of them is that 256 build plate just no not not doesn't it just disqualifies itself in fact a machine that uh, is a lot is somewhat a little bit cheaper than them and it has the same kind of features but I, I really like it is the basic uh, the cheaty uh, I believe it's the X smart 3 it's a very small machine build plates only 185 but if you're making small stuff the cheaty has its own software it's really fast it does a terrific job I have no complaints in fact I found it to be an excellent machine and the reason I like it so much is it, it uses linear rails so uh, overall I like I said the Solvo 8 the Solvo 8 is probably I think right now at least in the size range for the price I think it's just the best darn thing out there you know and it let's face it again uh, because of that build plate bamboo labs is you know you kick that one out to the curb because it can't handle that size you know, the best tip I think for beginners uh, that are getting their 3D printer is to learn CAD software. That's, you know, and do the best you can with learning a good CAD software that allows you to draw stuff up. That just, that is just going to make you so, 
whoa when you do make something on a 3D printer. That is, I, I guess that's gonna be my number one tip. And that was answering question number five. So, yeah. Yeah, for example, here in the shop, I needed some lights that were up straight up and down, and I built, I 3D printed and designed these things. They're, this looks like aluminum, it's not. It's just a very shiny uh, filament from, uh, I don't remember what company that was. This is some kind of silver. Uh, filament that's very metallic looking which was the idea at the time and uh, I've printed these up there they do the job they've been I've been using them for years now but I just absolutely love the fact that I was able to draw that up imagine how I wanted that to work with the uh, bar to hold the support the uh, light fixture and everything with it and they work great so it's just once you accomplish that sort of thing that task uh, it's like everything is, you know, becomes this new cool challenge where you take it on to try to come up with the best possible drawing. And that directly goes back to 3D printing. Once the part's made and you get the part in your hand and you're like, man, I imagined this thing, I drew it up, and like, whoa, here it is in my hand. It, you know, the real deal. And also, the only one in the world. <laughs> yeah, because nobody else has that one. You know? But that's... That's the five questions answered, I hope, uh, for Maker's Muse and uh, for his channel over there. Uh, it was about three weeks ago he did the show, hashtag uh, 3D printing for YouTube, I believe is the way he uh, spelled that out. So I'll put that in mind, I don't know, somewhere to link it up or whatever, so that other people uh, might be able, you know, that are into 3D printing, they may want to, you know, take on and maybe I'll tag those, you know, some other people in the business of 3D printing and, and uh, tag them and say, hey, you know, you answer those five questions and see what you think. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching Copy and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe. I don't know if you can ring the notice bell or not anymore. I, don't, I think we still have one. I don't know. Anyways, I'm out of here. Over and out. <laughs>